Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today's episode of Sue's Healthy Minutes is going to be a little different. Over the past weeks, I've been asked on multiple occasions about what I take with me in the way of bread when I travel. So I thought today, with summer vacation still ahead for some of you, I would share what type of real bread I take with me when I travel, whether by myself or with my family. Now, I realize that the week of July 4th is one of the busiest travel weeks of the summer, and so many of you may have already taken your vacations, but these ideas can go way beyond summer travel, even into any time of the year, and include any long or short trips. For me, what I take with me in the way of real bread will depend largely on how I'm traveling, whether by plane or driving, how long I will be on my trip, and also what will be the nature of my trip. In other words, where we will be staying and what we will be doing. So let me begin with the easiest scenario, short trips, maybe overnight or just a few days. Whether I'm flying or driving for these trips, rolls are my go-to and often granola. It's easy to toss a bag of rolls or granola in a carry-on bag and I'm set. Granola is such a great whole grain travel food because it doesn't get squished no matter how you pack it. Rolls can be eaten with any meal, even when dining out. If I know I'm going to be pressed for time the day before I leave, I will bake rolls ahead and freeze them. Traveling with frozen bread actually keeps it fresh longer and helps it to hold its shape when packed. If I'm driving and having access to refrigeration, I get a little more heavy with my food packing. I will take what I call my food box with my rolls and usually some homemade granola and my stash of herbal teas and a small container of honey. I usually take a small cooler, okay, maybe even a larger cooler with yogurt and fruit and some kefir juice and maybe even some of my raw milk, especially to have for breakfast. Along with rolls, I might bake some cinnamon bread to toast for breakfast. Again, it all depends on my accommodations, but most times if we are staying in a hotel, there is a breakfast in the lobby where we can have access to a toaster and butter. My husband, Brad, travels often making the co-op deliveries for Bread Beckers. He loves for me to make him rolls to take with him so he can enjoy them each morning for breakfast. He especially likes rolls as they are easier than a loaf of bread to cut and then toast. Sometimes I simply add cinnamon and raisins or cranberries to my basic dough recipe and then just shape them into rolls instead of loaves. He especially likes the orange cinnamon cranberry rolls. I have also made bagels to take as well or instead of rolls. For longer trips, if cooking is not possible, again, rolls and granola will be my choices and often tortillas. Tortillas are so easy to pack, especially if flying like granola they don't squish. In hotels where a hot breakfast is served, a breakfast burrito is easy to make, and it's a nice change of pace from yogurt, granola, and toasted bread. Most of our longer family vacations involve cooking. We rarely just stay in a hotel. Houses or condos with full kitchens are our preference. We enjoy the space and the ability to gather around the table or living room at the end of the day's activities. Here is where our family gets real with cooking on vacation. If we are driving, my mill and bread machine 
and some pails of grain go with me. I might choose to not take the bread machine if I have time to make loaves of bread and rolls before the trip. I will make them ahead and freeze them. They travel beautifully in a box standing on end so they don't get smashed as easily. And rolls can be used for hamburger or sandwich buns. In this case, I will just take my meal and grain and all ingredients for making muffins or pancakes for breakfast. We are usually big breakfast eaters, so we like to enjoy a nice breakfast before heading out for the day's activities. Even when flying, these appliances get packed in crates, stuffed with padding or clothing for cushioning during travel. When our kids were growing up, we took yearly snow skiing trips for a week or more. The mill and bread machine and pails of wheat were packed, surrounded by all the ski clothes in crates. And always, though not bread related, we also packed in a pressure cooker. So a hot meal of soup, chili, or stew could be prepared quickly after a long day of skiing. We didn't eat out much on ski trips. We preferred to stay in. And again, sometimes I would bake bread and cinnamon rolls ahead and freeze before packing. A few years ago, we went on vacation with Ashley, our oldest daughter, and her husband, Jamie, and their three kids. On this trip, we opted to take the bread machine and pails of flour already milled instead of taking our grain mill. With the bread machine, we could easily take five minutes to put a recipe of cinnamon bread on at night before bed to have ready in the morning. It was so nice to wake up to a delicious hot loaf of bread for breakfast before heading out to ski. Then after breakfast, we would load the bread machine up again with the basic dough recipe to have ready for a sandwich loaf for lunch, or sometimes just set on the dough setting so that dough would be ready when we came in for the day to roll out pizza or rolls. Needless to say, we eat very well on our vacation trips. These days, Brad and I both travel often for business. My travels usually involve speaking and teaching about bread, so I will typically have real bread available at my destinations. My stays for these events, though, are usually in hotels. So once again, I take rolls and my own granola, or sometimes even a small bag of rolled oats and a small bottle of honey. I always have a small travel size of Redmond salt in my purse. When driving, as mentioned above, my food box goes with me and usually a small cooler with water, fresh fruit, and yogurt. When flying, since I can't take a cooler with me, I will usually stop at a grocery store for some fruit and water to keep in my room. With the rolled oats, I can easily make delicious hot oatmeal right in my room using the in-room coffee maker to heat water, and then using either the hot cups in the room or my own hot travel mug that I bring with me, I then pour about one cup of water over half a cup or so of oats with a pinch of salt. I cover it and let it sit, usually while I dress for the day. When I'm ready to eat, I simply sweeten it with a little squeeze of honey and top with some fresh fruit and a splash of my raw milk if I have it and I enjoy my delicious, hot, whole grain breakfast. Once, I even brewed a cup of chai tea in my room, and I decided I wanted oatmeal. So I simply used the hot chai tea instead of water for my oatmeal. And I created my new favorite, even when I'm not traveling, chai tea oatmeal. It has all the flavors of cinnamon and spices that I love. When traveling and staying in a hotel, breakfast is usually an easy meal to pack real bread to enjoy. But eating out for lunch and dinner can take a little more creativity. We usually avoid fast food and choose restaurants where more real food options are available and simply avoid eating the bread offerings. I have, however, been known to take my rolls or bread into a restaurant to enjoy with my meal. I recently took a loaf of my French bread to have with the delicious dipping herbs and olive oil served at Carabas so I could resist the temptation of eating the white bread that they serve. 
Recently, on a bread training trip to a ministry in Colorado, I had had a long day of bread training. We started with breakfast foods early that morning, including muffins and pancakes, and then moved on to yeast breads using the Ankish Room mixer. We made rolls, pizza dough, and cinnamon rolls from two patches of bread dough. So as I headed back to my hotel room, I was exhausted. But I was also hungry, and I didn't really want to go in and sit down at a restaurant by myself to eat. And I still had a little shopping to do for the next day's supplies. So as I headed to the store, I passed a hamburger place known for their fresh-made burgers and fresh toppings. At this point in my fatigue, a hamburger sounded really good. So when I finished my shopping... I pulled into the hamburger place and ordered a burger with all the toppings to go. When I got back to my room, I got one of my rolls and I slid the delicious burger with lettuce, tomatoes, and onions off the white bread bun onto my delicious real bread roll. And I thoroughly enjoyed every bite. I have been known to do this not only in the privacy of my hotel room, but even inside a fast food establishment when there were no other options for a meal other than fast food. Real bread can travel, and vacations don't have to mean huge compromises of healthy eating. But the key word here is huge. Do what you can to stay and eat healthy in your travels, but also remember to enjoy your time away, and don't fret about a few splurges along the way. I hope what I've shared with you today will help get your creative juices flowing for your next travels. Remember, have fun and have safe travels, and thank you for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Breadbeckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.